So today I want to talk to you all um, on this leadership training. And I have a question for you. I had an email, and in this email, somebody that um, comes, sometimes she, she comes to our church, but she's newer. And she had a, a um, legitimate question. She asked, what denomination are you? She's been coming for a while. And I know that the she comes because she sees the healings and she's personally experienced some healing and it's been significant. So she can't deny the fact that the power of God is moving. She's met us. She knows she loves us. She, you know, relates to us, right? So there's that, that factor that I know them. I can relate. So she keeps coming back. But there's a big question. I can see it when I look at it. But there's a big question on her mind about our church and the structure and how come we are different from so many other churches. So she um, emailed this question. Wh wh which denomination are you? And I knew that this question was a loaded question and it really wasn't just about, oh, here it is. Oh, great, got it, thank you. I knew that there was a lot more that she actually wanted to ask. Mm. So I responded and we went back and forth and I thought, you know, this would be a really good thing to talk about in our leadership because you will get the same questions You'll get questions like this and others as well. And if you don't know how to answer and here you go to the church, right? Um, that's not good. Uh, it, you know, it's important for you to know it's the core of what we believe so that you can relay that versus, well, you just need to come and listen to her. You'll love her when you, I, people have said that, that's great, but people need more. And some people, that will never fly with them. You know, they, they just need more, right? So um, so I thought this would be a good, um, a, a good place for us to talk about. So she says, what denomination, you know, are you? And she says also, are you a oneness Pentecostal? Oh. So that was her question, are you a oneness Pentecostal? She just pulled that one out. That was her question. And I, I, anyway, I just, I answered her. And uh, she also asked for our belief statement, a uh, statement of belief, you know. She says, I, I have not been able to find a belief statement on your website. So I responded, first of all, what are we? You know, and I thought about that for a moment. I don't really like labels like that. You know, I don't really like labels, but I, I know that they do serve a purpose and they do help people kind to, they help people to understand a little bit, okay, they're over here. Like you could say, oh, well, we're Mormon. Well, that clearly tells you a lot about them, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we're Lutheran. Well, that tells you a lot about them. Oh, well, we're non-denomination or whatever. So it tells you something. I don't like labels, but they do serve a purpose, mm -hmm. right? So if you notice, you know, I, I don't know that I have labels on my website. I'm, I, if I do, it's not something that's repeated because I don't typically like. But anyway, I responded with this. We are a non-denominational, Bible-teaching, charismatic church. Um, I could have listed Pentecostal because we are very Pentecostal. Um, but what I put was non-denominational, Bible-teaching, because that is really important, charismatic church. Um, and I did tell her, and I'm telling you all this because in case you don't know, on our website... When you go to um, kathycopola.org and you go to the House of Glory's tab, on the House of Glory tab, when you go down to the bottom of that, it lists the, our statement of belief. It lists it there. I don't know why she couldn't find it. She says, I have not been able to see it. But anyway, I directed her there so that she can see it. And she said, thank you so much. Then she said, I see, because I sent her to the statement to our, our beliefs statement. Um, and by the way, do you are you all aware that we have one? Have you mm -hmm. gone to the website? Do you know that we believe in the Trinity? We, we, and it lists the scriptures. You know, we believe that, that you know, it, God Almighty, that Jesus is Lord. We believe, you know, in that Jesus is returning. There is a statement of faith mm -hmm. with scriptures on our website under the House of Glory tab. So you know what, what we believe as a church. That's important. Um, so she says, thank you. I see that you believe in the Trinity. That was her question. Yeah, she didn't believe, and I'm not sure why, uh, but whatever. She hasn't come back that many times. But, but um, she, has, she did not know that we mm -hmm. believed in the Trinity based on the amount of times that she's come and maybe whatever was said or whatever. And here's her thing. It's the word apostle. Yeah. 
the word apostle was kind of stumping her. So she says, I see that you believe in the Trinity, so you are not oneness Pentecostals, which are also called apostolic Pentecostals. So the word, the word apostle was throwing her, was throwing her off. Mm -hmm. So apparently, apostolic Pentecostals don't believe in the Trinity, I guess. Yeah. And they don't, okay. And this is what, see, like, I don't even get into all these different, there's so many sects of Christianity, so many. So, and she says, this is what confused me because you call yourself an apostle. That was how she ended her, she signed it. That's how she, so um, I thought, well, this is great. This is a this is a great question because it's leaving the conversation mm -hmm. open. Yeah. So I went ahead and responded, and I said, "We absolutely believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one." First John five seven, New King James: For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That was to answer the question about the Trinity, mm -hmm. but she asked more questions in that, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't directly. So I went ahead and addressed them, even though they weren't clearly asked i said ephesians 4 11 through 13 and he gave himself he gave some to be apostles prophets evangelists mm -hmm. some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of god dot 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 because there's more to that state that scripture and i said we believe in ephesians in Ephesians, there are five ministry offices listed. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. And these offices are sometimes referred to as the five-fold offices. I understand the confusion around the title apostle and prophet. And unfortunately, there are sometimes abuses in the church at large with such titles. Yet, I believe with proper teaching and true callings from God, not man-made callings, of which we know that they exist not in the kingdom of God. In other words, not in, not truly, not from God, but there are some that are appointed by themselves and by flesh. There's, but God's callings, you know, when God truly calls somebody. So I believe that through proper teaching and through true callings from God, not man-made callings, the body of Christ can move into authentic servant leadership, which honors God's given positions and roles of more responsibility with greater humility. So, and it says, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I would love to speak with you about this. And she said, she did have a question. My concern is that I wondered why you don't call yourself lead pastor. See, like all these questions were coming as we were having this dialogue, which is great. My concern is why you don't call yourself lead pastor instead of apostle, because I thought apostles were supposed to go plant churches but not lead them. Oh. So that was her understanding, and that's a valid question. I thought pastors were the ones who shepherd the church. Mm. Great. Wonderful. You know, so, so I said, and so the apostles do more than just plant churches. I am telling you this because you guys will have, and I know you've already have had, but you will continue to have these types of questions and not even just questions, but people that want to argue with you. They want to argue with you. They want to, you know, pose that. They want to fight. Mm -hmm. Because it's a religious spirit you're dealing with. You guys know that. It is a religious spirit. Mm -hmm. When you recognize it's a religious spirit, you have to bind it. You have to shut it down. Because it's not listening to anything you have to say. This to was not a exactly. religious spirit. This was a genuine... Mm -hmm. This was a genuine concern, which is why I went ahead and continued in this conversation. Otherwise, I wouldn't have wasted my time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have not wasted my time because I would have known I'm not going to play patty cake with the devil. Mm -hmm. But this was not that. This was genuine. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just said, apostles do more than just plant churches. They are visionaries. They're builders. They operate in all the gifts. Now you'll have people that don't agree with that. And I don't they care. Train up others. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get to that. They. I, I don't. I believe as an apostle, you should be operating in all the gifts. Exclamation point. Whether other people believe that or not is their prerogative. Mm -hmm. I know I operate in all the gifts. I know I'm called to be an apostle. I know that 
as a God-fearer, the fullness of God's Spirit lives in me. The, all the gifts, whether you're called to be an apostle or not, should be in operation in all of you. But you're going to have yours that are stronger. You're going to have your, your gifts that you walk in more. Maybe those that you're more comfortable with are obviously the ones that you're going to be more exercised in because you use them more. But so you'll have first, secondary, and all that. But you should have all the gifts. And at the time that it's required of you, because the situation confronts it or it presents itself, you're, you should be able to be that evangelist, even though maybe you don't, you know, think that that's your strongest gift. But you really, we have the holy, the fullness of God's Holy Spirit within us, so we should have all. But as an apostle, I believe it should be flowing. I believe that you should be able to identify all of the gifts in this in, in that office. They have a high level of authority as an apostle. Many times you will see healings and deliverances because of their authority. Mm -hmm. There are some apostles, remember her question was, why don't you just call yourself a lead pastor? Which I thought it was interesting, interesting, or at least that she didn't say, well, the fact that she didn't bring in the woman, she didn't use the woman card. She didn't use that. And maybe it just, I think we didn't get there. Or maybe it's not an issue. It didn't come up. But anyway, it was just, why are you not calling yourself a lead pastor? Why apostle? So there are apostles who also serve as pastors, and they function in that office, as I do in my church. I'm an apostle, but I also function as a pastor in my church. I'm also a prophetess, and I function as that when God calls me to. Although I said I'm a pastor, my office of apostle takes precedence as there is much healing and deliverance in the authority of that office. Apostles serve as pastors to pastors as well. And in doing so, they help lead those churches. And in serving as an apostle, part of my role includes providing pastoral care to local pastors. Maybe some of you don't even know. But that is definitely what I do. And again last night, another local pastor calling for prayer and calling for advice. Um, and that's been going on. But an apostle is going to be a pastor to pastors. You've got to be able to speak and to be. So you are shaping that church, even yes. if you didn't plant that church. You're still speaking into the lives of that church because that's what you're called to do. God has not called you as a visionary just so that you could, you know, because your thing is why, you know, if you're shepherding a local church, why would you call yourself a pastor? Oh, I should do so much more than shepherd a local church. And then, you know, when you think about the online church, which is a church, mm -hmm. you know, that is a whole nother um, part, but I didn't include that, but that is a whole nother part. Anyway, I just said Paul had three missionary journeys. He planted churches, and he also oversaw those same churches that he established by serving as a pastor to the pastors, which he trained and equipped for ministry to the local body. Apostles also help lead the churches that they plant by correcting doctrinal errors and unbiblical practices that creep into the church, of which I've had to do, I can't tell you now how many times. Personally, to people, one-on-one, -on -one, I've had to do it even from I've had to do it even from the pulpit. But personally, I've had to do this. And some listen and they thank me for it later and some don't. And they end up in trouble. Just give it time. Just give it time. Um, let me just finish and then yeah. Anyway, actually that's it because she just actually she just said, Thank you. For answering my questions I understand this much better now God bless you in all that you are doing Amen. Amen. go ahead <laughs> okay I have to be honest about the apostle thing mm -hmm. at first I couldn't understand of course I just didn't understand it at all and now you're explaining it so but it didn't bother me to the point to me yeah <laughs> I really liked it yeah and then uh, I've been to many big churches and I have a friend who was a pastor, and she was a woman. And I went to this, uh, and uh, this pastor went, it was this big church, popular, you guys probably would know it, and this man, and this pastor said, women are not pastors. They are not pastors. 
So maybe even the apostle woman, oh, yeah. that kind of like, hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, so I didn't understand it. So the explanation that you gave me, you know, it puts me, it's not that it's going to put me more at ease, but it's maybe going to help me explain it because honestly, there are people that I have brought and they said, why does she call herself an apostle? Exactly. So that question comes a lot. Mm -hmm. It comes a lot, and I'm glad that you brought that up. And you're not the only one that either currently feels that way or has felt that way in the past. Um, so in our Western churches, we don't teach on this too, too much. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's not actually being taught and that it doesn't exist, and it has. Uh, you know, people in Africa, in other countries, there is no problem with the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. They they understand it. It's part of their everyday church life. Mm -hmm. But here in our Western culture, where things are 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 not as as clear because it's just not taught on. You know, they got stuck on the five on the pastor and evangelist and teacher three out of the five, mm -hmm. and they just got stuck there. And I've shared and I've done some teaching on on this. Uh, on this very topic. It is actually at the website. And, and I don't have any problem reiterating things right now because the question's you know, obviously presented itself, not just in the form of an email, but presently. So um, I'm glad you asked that because I think that every single person here has that a little bit and they're getting used to it. Some, some are fine, they were fine from a whole long, long time ago. Never was an issue with them at all. Past, Pastor Wanda has always shared with us, Pastor Steve, you know, there are some that have, that's just not, the question in their mind because they were raised in a church where this was normal but most Christians most churches here in our western you know world this is not that common and seems foreign so to have a woman at the pulpit to have a woman as a pastor is already taboo to some but then to have a woman that calls herself an apostle is like adding fuel to the fire <laughs> Like, are you trying to keep, you know, or do you want your church to stay small? Somebody actually asked me that. Somebody actually asked me that. Do you, do you realize that your church would be so much bigger if you would drop the title apostle? Ow. If you would not honor, if you would not honor, you do really well. If we didn't call each other parents or had, it's like so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're right. not sorry. Don't be sorry. No. It is true. No, but that is true. So they, they're like, do you realize that you would have, they're, they're like, wow, like you move in signs and wonders, you preach, like, you know, they're like, wow, do you realize that if you just would not, if you just would drop the title apostle, do you know how many people would be here? And I'm like, wow, all I see is Satan right now in front of me saying, here's the dangling carrot. Well, it was not dangling to me. It's not, it's not enticing to me, but the picture. So deny your call. That reminds me of a time when I got out of my car somebody walked by and said if you get rid of that Bible yeah you'll just be fine <laughs> yeah. I don't remember oh, what he said wow. but if you get rid of the Bible oh, it's yeah, like right. huh? no way <laughs> but you know that's, a, that's a, something going on right now oh, yeah. Yeah. Satanic, yeah. Um, yeah it's true why? so uh -huh. I want to get back to the question because it was a genuine mm -hmm. question you had asked you know um, some people will ask in, in churches people you know people that you've been friends with mm -hmm. and they'll genuinely listen Chris, I know you're going over there, but this is wrong. Like, I, I don't know where she is. I don't know where she goes off calling herself a, an apostle, but this is unbiblical. Like, okay, like this kind of conversation, and you're just going, you know, because you know both of them, and you're just feeling this intimidation going, oh, no, yeah, what do I know? I have no answer. How do I respond? So I want, let's talk about that for a moment because it's true. It's valid. It's a valid question. And um, so since I have brought, I think, three or four different teachings here, in this mm -hmm. setting, in the past about this, before I jump in there and, and share, I'm gonna ask if anyone remembers from the teachings that I have already brought forth, and if you don't, that's okay, that just shows me that there is a need for us to talk about this again. Um, does anybody want to add, how would I respond? How have I responded? What does the Bible say about this? What's the right response to this type of a question? An apostle. Why do you call yourself apostle? Yeah. Why do why why do we have apostles? Why do you sit under a church that has a woman and that woman is an apostle? Why can't we just call her pastor? So, um, what are some? Does anybody have a response? Okay, she operates as an apostle. 
Okay. She's building. She's building. I'll be honest with you. Okay, let's just get the questions before, I mean, the answers before more questions. Okay, but hold that question. Okay. No male or female in Christ. Okay, yes. no male or female in Christ. Of, of the alignment of the giftings that God has sent. Yes. Yeah. Right. Everyone. Yes. Subject to another. Right. You know. Right. Alignment. No male or female. Very good. Remember, we're adding to the understanding, not asking more questions right now. Also, you know, many people they want examples from the Bible. So, so what I say is, you know, there are many examples of women leadership in in the Scripture, even in the Old Testament. You know, uh -huh. like Deborah. You know, she right. was a leader, a preacher, mm -hmm. um, a, a judge. You know, and all these things. So, so. But they don't want to hear it sometimes, but if there it is, look it up. That's right, you exactly. Know. Many women in the Bible as leader, leadership. Oh, you were going to say what Donna said about they're in the kingdom of God, there's no male nor female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Yeah, okay. I think what it speaks to me most is that God told you well before mm -hmm. that prophetic word that you did not, uh, you waited. And you waited, the yeah. humility and the cost. Right. I mean, I know that's not, but that right. is, it is. That's what humility, speaks to you. Humility is scriptural. Right. When you see a servant right. of God. Right. Because you know my personal story. So, yeah, exactly. Just more about, you know, that mm -hmm. God spoke that to me years ago mm -hmm. and then started to confirm it. And it wasn't something I ran and jumped into for sure. But, yeah. One more I'm thinking of is you didn't appoint yourself. That's right. right. So you're yeah. calling yeah. yourself. Yeah. Right. God. Exactly. Yeah, it's a God-appointed position. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, Diana. Second John 1, to the elect lady and her children, and she had a home church. I don't That's know right. if that makes her an apostle, but mm -hmm. there was that person in Acts that is a female, um, and she was an apostle. Okay, Romans. Oh, Roman, Romans? Romans 16. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to Romans right now. And I'm going to have somebody read it out loud. 16. Mm. So, yep. Junia is her name. Yes. It's a female. And she and, and Paul lists her as an apostle. It says here, verse 5. I'm going to start with verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved, if I can't pronounce that name, who is the first fruits of Acacia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles. In other words, he's saying, listen, this is noteworthy for you to, this is important. This is of note. This is important that you take note of this. Pay attention. They are also among the apostles. They are part, they're apostles who were in Christ before me. Paul actually lifted women up to positions, not put them down. People will go to the scriptures in Corinthians and they'll go to the scriptures in Timothy that say for that specific church that a woman should not preach, should not have any kind of authority over a man, that it's shameful for a woman to teach a man or to preach in church, to speak in church. People will go to those scriptures and make that as if that is clear across the board for every church and for every woman. That is false teaching. I'm sorry, but that is wrong. It is so false. You have to look at the whole picture. You've got to look at all of Paul's sayings. Paul actually lifted women up. Let's go back to Romans chapter 1. And let's, and in the very, in very, yeah, verse 1. I'm sorry, I meant to say Romans 16, but verse 1. Romans 16, same chapter, but verse 1. It says, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant. My Bible says servant. When you look up that word servant, that word servant means a deaconess, means a deacon in church. It means an ordained minister. A deacon is an ordained 
minister. A minister is a servant of God that serves in a formal role. So meet, she, he says here, I commend. In other words, I am lifting up, I'm admonishing, I'm encouraging you to listen to this woman that actually had a church. And I'll show you where. Let's just keep reading. I commend to you Phoebe, a deaconess, an ordained minister, a deacon in church. Why am I focusing and emphasizing? Because there are people that will say, oh, well, yeah, anybody can. In, it's in the marketplace. No, no. This was in church. And what's the difference anyway? Does God yeah. say, you can preach out there on the streets, but it's, it's forbidden and invalid if you preach in a building. Even the thought of that is ridiculous. No, no common sense in that at all, but okay. But it is an argument that people have. So anyway, Phoebe, our sister who is servant, which is really a deacon, a deaconess, an ordained minister in the church. And so he says that you, look at verse 2, that you may receive her. He is saying, listen, stop excluding. Stop poo-pooing. Like stop eliminate, stop pushing people down because of who they, because they're a female. That you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of. Help her. Amen. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and also myself. She's also helped me. Mm -hmm. Then it says, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ. Priscilla was the female, a woman minister. They talked about in Acts chapter 18. But again, it's reiterated here in, in, in Romans 16. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Aquila. It says, my fellow workers in Christ. Who risked, oh, and by the way, they had a church in their own house. Yes. They had a church yes. in their own house. Mm -hmm. Priscilla did most of the teaching. Mm -hmm. And she taught that which was already taught, but taught them in a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking, well, okay, you can teach the children and you can teach the women. No. Yeah. She actually taught Apollos, which was already learned, yeah. but she taught them a more excellent way. So now she's teaching the teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm just making a point here that people that have a problem... It's, an un it's a spirit of unbelief. It's a religious spirit. It's nothing new. It's nothing new under the sun. But if we don't get the clarity of this, we have to get the clarity on this. And I mean we as a body. Because you will have this opposition. People will come against you. And I want, to, I want us to be able to answer biblically. So let's go back. Verse, verse 3. I read verse 3. Verse 4. It says, Who risked their own necks for my life. So he's talking about Phoebe. Priscilla, Aquila, he's talking about, you know, some of these women who risked their own lives, from their necks for my own life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. In their house. Then it goes on to reading what I just got done saying. Um, in this chapter of Romans 16 Paul lists I think there's about seven women in this chapter um, I've studied this chapter and I've got their names circled you know he's got Mary he's got uh, in verse 12 Tryphosa which and uh, Tryphenia which both are women and he keeps on saying greet them Greet them because they've labored in the Lord. They've labored much. Um, these are people that have worked. They've given their lives. And they're list, the one, it says, listed amongst the apostles. Um, now, when we go over to Ephesians, let's just go over to Ephesians uh, 4. And then we'll... And then we'll, we'll talk about these two. But Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Jesus himself gave some. He, Jesus himself did not give men. Jesus did, himself did not only give only men that are of one marriage, never been divorced. Because you know what? We could throw that stone, couldn't we? We're not going to throw stones, guys. But I'm just saying, the arguments, we could, you know, be a man of one wife. Well, then that's going to disqualify a whole lot of pastors that have been married three and four times and that are up there preaching the word of God saying a woman shouldn't teach the word. Should you? So if we're going to start throwing stones, then there's a lot of stones we can start picking up and throwing. But we're not going to do that. But I do want you guys to know, you guys, we have to be wise to these things. 
And the bottom line is, let's go back to Ephesians 4. His, Jesus said he himself gave some, not just men, some to be apostles. I could stop right there. He gave some people, those that are called and appointed by God, to be in that role. He did not say, I gave men to be apostles. If he wanted to say, I gave men to be apostles, he would have said that. But he said he gave some. That's how God showed it to me. I read it over and over and over, and he kept saying, keep reading it. Because I, too, had that wrong thinking in the beginning when I knew God said, you're, you're an apostle. And I thought, well, in my spirit, I knew that I was, even though I didn't have any, I had no clue as to even what that meant. You know, in other words, I knew by the spirit of the Lord that it, it bore witness, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't have any teaching as to what an apostle even was. And I was not going to let that cat out of the bag because I thought that was weird anyway. But in my spirit, it made sense. <laughs> but I thought, apostle? Are you kidding? Because people confuse it with the 12 apostles mm -hmm. that saw mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. that walked, you know, when Jesus was on earth. Those apostles can never be uh, duplicated. We're not talking about the 12 original apostles. And so, but we are talking about offices that are really roles of responsibility and apostle is mentioned here. And it's, I just read it in Ephesians. That's only one place. It's also listed in, in the book of Corinthians. But in this place, it gives you the fivefold, fivefold offices. It mentions apostles, listing it first. Um, so when the Lord told me years ago that I was called to be an apostle, and, I, and I, it did bear witness, but even though I didn't understand it at the time, and I wasn't going to let anybody know about that just yet, because I thought, okay, it's a little strange. I still needed to learn and understand what it meant. And then, you know, over time, um, it started to become apparent to other people, and people were saying it. And, and then, of course, when I was ordained, because, and he said, you're an apostle. You know, I had many confirmations. Well, that was great. Okay, it's been confirmed. But then my question was, before I accepted the actual ordination, before I even went through it, I had to go before the Lord and say, Lord, I know you told me this a long time ago. So first it came from God. But now man wants to give me this title and I'm really uncomfortable. Because if I'm not convinced myself, that's how I am. If I'm not convinced about something, I'm not going to go and share that with you guys. I'm not going to act. I'm not going to fake. If I don't believe something, then I'm not going to teach it. Right? I have to, be, I have to teach what I'm fully 110% convinced about. Right? And if, I, and if there's... And if, it, if it's a flip side, I think it's wrong. I'm going to tell you it's wrong. I'm not going to act like somebody I'm not is what I'm trying to say. So I, I was like, Lord, I know you told me this a long time ago. It's been confirmed. People are, you know, but I can't call myself. And now he's like, I'm going to ordain you. I can't. How am I? How am I going to? How you've created me. Like, how am I going to just present myself and say, yeah, I'm an apostle, but I don't even believe it myself. How am I going to make anybody else believe it? Like, how am I going to explain to them? How am I going to really even prove this to them if I don't even know it? I, you're going to have to help me here. So he literally says to read this scripture. I start reading it. Yes. Okay, I read it. Read it again. So I read it again. He kept asking me to read it because I wasn't seeing what was, I wasn't getting the revelation. I've read the scripture so many times. It's just kind of gone over my head. And then he says, read it again, read it again, read it again. Finally, the light bulb went on. And I went, oh my gosh, you're right. There are five offices in that scripture. Not just pastor, not just teacher, and not just evangelist. Those three offices, I'm good with. And most people are good with. Even profit. It's too bad. Some people are like, oh, okay. But, you know, it's been talked about enough to where we're okay. We can comfortably wear those shoes only for maybe a few hours, but not all day. But not too bad. Right? You know, those pairs of shoes that are so uncomfortable. But you can grin and bear it for a little while, but you're not going to wear them all day. Right? Okay, profits. Okay, we can kind of get it. You know, it's fine, you know. But apostle, come on. You know, uh-uh. So, but when he had me read it over and over and over and over, the revelation was, wait, 
In the same sentence, Lord, you are saying that you have given some, in the New Testament you're saying this, you have given some to be all five of those offices, not just the three that are so easily acceptable in our common churches. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh my gosh. So the problem is not the apostle. The problem is the teaching in the church that hasn't had the revelation. They haven't had the revelation that this is Jesus saying, I have given some, and this is in the New Testament church. When I was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, (laughs) this makes sense. And then then to top that off with, and you didn't say men. You Mm -hmm. said some, which includes me as a woman apostle. That's what convinced me. That scripture. Mm 